Uh, let's go back into that story of the EU citizens living in the UK being granted settled status, which allows them the right to remain permanently in the country after Brexit. However, a further 4,500 applications were refused, 36,500 were withdrawn, and nearly 35,000 were made by people who were not eligible for the scheme. But in response to the figures, the Lib Dems have called for EU citizens to be automatically given a right to stay, warning that the scheme could risk a new Windrush-style scandal. Christine Jardine is the Liberal Democrat spokesperson on Home Affairs, Women and Equalities, who's with us now. Afternoon to you. I'd have thought you'd be congratulating the Prime Minister on keeping his words, Christine. Well, we haven't seen all of the... the he said that EU citizens would be guaranteed the right to stay, and we haven't actually seen that. I am pleased, obviously, that two million people have been given settled status. But it's not all of the EU citizens who were in this country and who were contributing, paying tax, national insurance and bringing skills to this country and skills that we don't want to lose. And also, because the government hasn't been willing to get, you know, give them a, a, a paper proof that they're entitled to stay here, we, you know, you'd think we would have learned from Windrush. We would have learned that if people have a right to stay here, they need proof of it so that 10, 20, 30 years down the line, um, it's not challenged. And, you it's, know, it's pushing it a I bit, Christine, isn't it, to, to try and kind of perm out a Windrush comparison. It's no. a bit naughty, this, isn't no, it? No, Come on, this is not. about Brexit. We voted to leave. So oh, it's therefore, about Brexit. Therefore it's our about Brexit. But th therefore our status, of course, as a country is different and the other European citizens' relationship with this country will be different. So it's not the same thing. It's not about Brexit because, um, you know... Well, ultimately, Liberal it's Democrats, about Brexit, I don't, it? No, it's not. Brexit, there is... The Liberal Democrats fought tooth and nails because we believed that Brexit was the wrong thing for this country. Yeah, that's fine, now, I get that. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have moved on. Yeah. Brexit is going yes. to happen at the end of December. Mm -hmm. But what we are talking about now is 4 million people who've lived in this country, some of them for decades. Their children are born here, they've paid national insurance, they've paid tax, they've contributed to this society. And it's their right to stay here. Now, you say that it's pushing it to compare it to Windrush, but that's exactly what happened with Windrush. People who were encouraged to come here, who brought skills to this country, whose children were born here, and then decades down the line were told, no, you can't stay. Now, what we're trying to do is prevent that sort of thing happening again. And to do that, you need to give people some sort of proof that they're entitled to stay. And also, you know what? There are lots of people. I'm very sad about the fact that I have constituents who have, are those people who've been here for decades. Uh, 40 years, some of them. Um, their children were born here and they have vital skills. They've been working in our economy and at a time when our economy is um, shrinking and we are going to need everybody to do their bit and we need all the skills we possibly can muster to get us out of this post-COVID situation when it comes along. They're leaving and they're taking those skills but elsewhere. Some, some, some might be and some, of course, won't have those vital skills. They might be on, on lower skilled jobs. But regardless, everybody now knows. We've had a lot of notice, Christine Jardine, haven't we, on this, that you know, if you want to apply for settled status, you can do. There can't be a single EU citizen in this country that's not aware of that process. It's not about being aware of the process. It's about whether or not the process is fair and gives, you know... Well, if you've been here for decades, you cited somebody who's been here for decades. If you've been here yeah. for decades, you ain't going nowhere. Well, they are actually. They're leaving well, the you might do. Because... You might be by choice, but no one's kicking you out. <laughs> you make, if if you're making it difficult. For do you, but do you have a single example not... of somebody who's lived here for decades has been told they can't stay here? I have a single example of um, a family who were here for forty years. They're, both of the children were born in this country. One child was given automatic um, nationality. The other one wasn't. And when they started. Um, applying for uh, settled status, it was so complicated um, that they they eventually said, you know what, this is just too much to ask of people who've lived here all this time. It was, so, you know... Was it that complicated? How have all the other people managed to fill out the forms and get their settled status? I've done loads of phone-ins on people who said, yep, I put my application you know in, what? it was fair enough you know and what? it came through. The fact that one person fills out a form successfully is not... Um, does not justify a system which does not guarantee people the protection of having proof that they have filled out that form successfully 20 years from now. It does not 
make it right. How, how would you ever address that, though? Um, how, how would you, st to, to everyone's give satisfaction? Give them a certificate. Give them a certificate. But if you surely applied for settled status, you do get a, a return email saying, yes, you've got settled status. A return email is not a legal certificate. We've talked about this for months. And the situation is that we are not, I do not believe, we are doing, we are, we are not living up to our own, I don't think, moral standards, our own, our own reputation for welcoming people and being fair with people in the way that we are handling this um, situation. There's two million the people. Nationals. The Prime Minister is allowing two million people to stay here. There's a lot more than two million. There, there might well be, but not everybody. Yeah, but country. not everybody is entitled, of course. And you know, we are now in a different. We have a different status. Well, that's the thing. Do that's you just want? Do you just want ever? Do you just want a row with the Tories, Christine? Is no, that what this is ultimately? I don't about? actually, because if you can't do a bit, don't you? Back, no, I don't. I don't blame you, by the way. You're a Lib Dem. It's what you're meant to do. No, what I'm meant to do is stand up for the what I believe are the best interests of my constituents and the rest of the country as well. But there is a system in mind, place. There's a system in place you, to apply for settled status. But I don't think it's a fair system. And so I think it's important to draw attention to that and to say to people, look, we can do better than this. Because you we want them to have a certificate this. at the end of it. I want them to feel that they are guaranteed that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, someone will not say you have to leave this but country. But your, 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 your settled status return well. email will tell you that. A return email. A return email. How many people do you know whose computers have gone down and they've lost their emails? How so many you're, you're worried about computers? people's printers? An email, an email, no, an email is not sufficient. It's not sufficient. It's a legal document. You need document. legal documentation. You need legal documentation to say that, you know, this, is, you know, I am entitled to stay in this country that will not be challenged down the line. So now, that means everybody, people, are you saying everybody of that two million nobody, then? Uh, everybody of that two million haven't got a piece of paper that is authentic legally? We have a problem in this country with valuing people who contribute to very important parts of our community, our NHS. I get that, but that's a different system. argument, isn't it? No, it's not. It all comes down to the same argument. If we valued those people properly and their input properly, we would, for example, be saying to all the foreign nationals who put their lives on the line in the NHS and the social care sector and COVID-19, yes, of course, you have indefinite right to well we have to two million people that's quite a lot of people we have hang on just a second there's only two million people and we have um you know we could give those people the right to remain indefinitely we could say to all four million um eu citizens who've come to this country who've cont contributed paid tax built lives bought homes have their children in schools uh pay national insurance pay income uh, most tax. of those people yes, will be staying pay, but Yes, but we are not automatically giving them the right, and we're not. But if, if you're an 18 year old that comes over from Poland to work in Costa or Nero, as lovely as that is, and good on them for doing that, that wouldn't be seen, would it, as somebody who's got crucial skills? What would you include about? that? Would you include a barista in that equation? I don't know many baristas who've come from Poland, but I assume really? there are some. But what we are talking about is what we are talking about. How do you value people? Do you value people by what they earn or do you value people by what they do, how they contribute to, this, to society? But everybody contributes. If, if you're working, you're contributing. I mean, yes, even, you know, exactly. if you're That's working, you're contributing. Exactly. You're, what you're saying is you just want everybody to stay here. What I'm saying is I want people who have come here, built a life, contributed to our society, paid the national insurance. So does that include the, the barista in Costa? Yes, it would. If he so everybody, here, you want everybody, Christy? But wait, the, the plain, simple fact Which is... Which is fine, but you should just economy, say, I want everybody plain, to stay. The plain, simple fact is that our economy needs immigration. We do. We need people to come to this country. We need people to fill the, the, the skill gaps that we've yeah, got. And nobody's we stopping immigration. Our demographic is difficult. But what I'm saying is the people who are already here, the immigrants who are already here and who have contributed deserve better than this government is giving them. OK, on that point, Christine Jardine, thank you. Spokesperson uh, on Home Affairs and Women and Equalities, uh, MP for the Liberal Democrats. Um, I, I'll throw that over to you, actually. I, I think I gave it a good go. I think I did. Um, but I'm not sure I was able to fully understand beyond everybody should stay. And that's fine if that is your position, by the way. If you r believe that, everybody, whether you are a neurosurgeon from Kdansk or whether you are a barista from Barcelona, uh, 
Great. If that's your view, say it then. Just say everybody should stay. Uh, I don't think you could say that everybody's contribution is somehow some kind of crucial building block of our economy in the last 50 years. No more than you could say every indigenous person is contributing in that way. I mean, that would just be daft, wouldn't it?